Did you know the foods you eat can enhance the pain you're already experiencing? Neither did I. Today we're going to learn about that. Again, we're with Dr. Harlan Sparer. How are you today, Dr. Harlan? Good to see you. How are things going? Great, thanks, Kelly. Okay, my understanding is that the foods we eat can make the pain we're experiencing worse. How can that be? Well, it all boils down, ultimately, to how a nerve transmission occurs. How is pain transmitted? Now, if you look at the illustration I provided, you'll see that there are nerves that connect to each other. Well, almost connect, but they're very close. And an ele electrical potential or a charge or a little shock gets transmitted along the nerves. That's all fine and good. Now what happens is, once that transmission of pain sensation gets transmitted, it goes back into the spinal cord. Now once it gets into the spinal cord, the filtration process begins. The fil filtration process, essentially, is not every pain message gets transmitted into pain in the brain. Hmm. For instance, if I poke you like this, okay. you feel it. Okay. Does it hurt? No. Exactly. But if we lower the threshold of perception, or basically if we make it easier for the message to get to your brain, when I do this, it's going to hurt you. Now, by the same token, the body works the same way by filtering out messages from the cells, from the skin, from the body, into the brain. Now, this gets really important because we're dealing with one of the mediators for pain perception, and that is prostaglandin 2, also known as PGE2. PGE2. What is PGE2? I don't understand this. Now and I, I don't think anybody else does either, so and, and you know, those terms. It's not something that has to intimidate you. Think, okay. think of it as something that the body makes that affects the way nerve transmission is affected. In plain English, when you have more PGE2, your perception of pain is heightened. In other words, if I poke you like this, mm -hmm. you're going to go, ow! That's the difference when you have an excess of PGE2. PGE2. So what causes our PGE2 to increase, I guess, is a good question. Well, basically what happens <clears throat> is there are some really lovely foods that are very, very commonly present in the American diet. Notably, soda pop, caffeine, uh, wheat, gluten, uh, omega-6 oils, you know, fry, French, in French fries. Mm -hmm. You've got a number of pain-inducing foods, and they induce pain, and they increase pain, and the body's perception of pain by forcing the body to make more PGE2. So how does the body do that? Well, the body is going to take something when you eat it, and it's going to make it into cells or cellular substances in any way it can mm -hmm. before it's going to excrete it or eliminate it. So what it does is when it sees an excess of omega-6 oils, as an example, which are present in the oil in the french fries, the grease in the hamburger, things like that. Okay. The body's going to say, oh, we've got to do something with this nutrient. I have an idea. <laughs> Let's make more PGE2. But the body already has enough PGE2. So what happens is you have an excess of it. Now, once you have an excess of it, you have a problem. The problem you have is now this PGE2 is going to start having mm -hmm. effects. One effect it's going to have is it's going to make the pain perception increase. So something that's like a little owl becomes a big owl. Which isn't good. That's a not good thing. <laughs> the other thing that's not good is it increases the amount of swelling in a swollen area. So in other words, if you cut yourself or bump yourself and it gets a little swollen, with the excess of PGE2, it's going to get more swollen. If you have arthritis or some autoimmune problem, it's going to make the effect worse. So the, the foods, for example, the bad foods, um, are going to enhance this pain and all the things you're talking about. What about gluten, refried sugar, uh, refried sugars, <laughs> refined sugar is a better word. We've been in I Arizona mean, too long. Yeah, I have. It's very hot. So that's my question. You've got all this refined sugar. We've been talking about that for a while. The bad oils, the bad sugars, gluten and wheat, all this is going to make it worse? Exactly. 
these substances, these food substances, mm -hmm. and I use that uh, in a quote, these food substances will increase the production of PGE2. And the last thing we need at this point, if we're in a chiropractic office, is more PGE2. Wow. So what can we substitute to get rid of all that? Besides just eliminating it. Right. Well, that's, well a, that's a good step. Don't get me wrong. Exactly. Well, if, if you look at some of the food on the table, mm -hmm. you'll notice that something like olive oil is an omega-3. Avocado, omega-3. Uh, salmon, omega-3. And there are many forms of omega-3 oils. Now, the omega-3 oils will have a positive effect, whereas the omega-6 oils get converted into PGE2, your, your, your oils that are fried, mm -hmm. typically. Mm -hmm. And I think eliminating fried foods helps. You can substitute gluten-free breads or eliminate gluten entirely. Uh, that helps tremendously. And refined sugar, you can substitute un unrefined sweeteners, like stevia, as a perfect example. What about raw sugar? I keep seeing this thing called raw sugar. I mean, are you just trying to eliminate sugars, period? Well, basically all the sugars will have this effect. The refined mm -hmm. sugars will be worse. So what is stevia then? Stevia. Stevia, thank you. Stevia is a really amazing substance. It's made from the leaves of a plant. Mm -hmm. It has zero calories. It has zero glycemic impact. Basically in English, it's everything you want in a sweetener without the sweetener. Wow. So it tastes sweet, but it doesn't make anything sweet uh, in terms of the effect on your body. Okay. But it does on your palate. So, I mean, you're saying eliminate fried foods. What about frying with, say, olive oil, even, well, even lightly? I mean, Well, anytime you heat an oil, mm -hmm. you're going to affect the change in the oil. The higher you heat the oil, or the longer you heat the oil, the more deleterious the effect. Basically, if you deep fry something, it's going to be worse than if you pan fry it. If you pan fry it for a brief period of time, it's going to be less bad than if you pan fry it for a long period of time. Okay. So basically, the, what we're talking about here is eliminating the bad stuff. We've talked about it before, putting in good, healthy foods as substitutes. And the side effect of this is what? Health. Great health. And, and you know, part of it is, it's, it's this constant, um, constant quest on the part of many uh, allopathic healthcare providers to find the cure for chronic health. Cure for chronic health. What do you mean by that? Well, basically. We'd like to be healthy. We don't need something to interfere with it, and this interferes with it. I see. Hmm. Well, this is great. Good, healthy food. Get rid of the bad stuff. Side effect is good health. Healthy life, healthy living. <laughs> Dr. Harlan, again, this has been great. Thank you, Kelly. Let's live healthy and eat healthy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.